y'all, welcome back. I'm April and this is Vinyl Cottage. I'm so happy to have you with me today. And if you don't know, we are located in Northport, Alabama. So all my local friends, please stop by and see us. We're happy to have you here. Today, we are gonna work on a reverse canvas. Um, have you seen those before? I've been reading about them. I've seen them on Pinterest and crafting groups and they look so good. They're so easy, actually. And I know I'm a little late to the game. Um, it took me a little while to jump on board with this to find the time to do it. So you may already know what you're doing, but those of you who don't, hang in there with me and we're gonna do a reverse canvas together. So let's get started. For our reverse canvas, obviously you're gonna need a canvas. I am using a 16 by 20, but you can use any size that you want. Just with um, us heat pressing onto it, you wanna remember to make it, you just wanna keep in mind the size of your heat press. So I'm doing a 16 by 20 reverse canvas with my image fit on a pretty much a full 12 by 15 inch sheet of HTV. You can, put your HTV directly on the canvas as is without prepping it in any way. But what I wanna do is I wanna give mine a little color. So I'm going to use acrylic craft paints and I'm painting the background. So I've gone ahead and painted mine and I did just a two-tone color. And I didn't show how to do this because this part, you guys, this is where you get creative and you do it however you want. I am not an artist, so all I did was I just did brush strokes back and forth with a layer and then I did let it dry and I added a top layer. And if you really look close, you'll see where I didn't even get my entire canvas. I just wanted mine to be kind of, not messy, but just very simple brush stroke canvas. If you decide to paint your canvas, obviously you wanna let it dry. But for the reverse canvas, once it dries, we've gotta take the backing off. And so you see how the back, you want yours, it's open and it's all stapled in here. Now I've seen people do this in a couple of ways. I've seen people pull every one of these staples out. Guys, y'all, I don't have time for that. So I am gonna use my handy dandy box cutter or craft knife, whatever you have. And we're going to lay it down on the table and just cut around the outside of the staples. You want to make sure you cut on the outside because you are removing the canvas. If you do like I did the first time I tried this and I went along cutting the inside, it did me absolutely no good. So remember guys, safety first when using your box cutter or your um, craft knife. Be very careful. The hardest part is at the edges. See where it overlaps? Um, that is where I find I have to really work with it to get, to get it to fully cut to be able to pull it loose but I just take my knife and you do not have to be precise. All of, none of this is gonna show. You have your canvas completely removed. You are left with a frame. This is the inside of the canvas. And so it makes a great frame. It's very, it, it's got a little detailing to it, a little decorative. And so you can, you're ready to go like this. If you like the raw wood look, this wood can be stained or you can paint it. So I'm gonna show you the one that I've already painted. So painted it brown and there are some spots I probably should have sanded. So just kind of feel around it, do what you wanna do. This is, you know, make it your own project. And so from here, we're going to take this canvas, this is our free canvas now, and we're gonna add our HTV on our heat press and then we're gonna put it back on the frame. So I kinda eyeball it and just put it on here in the center and just to kinda check to see what I think, I lay my frame on here about where it's gonna go and just kinda adjust it from there. I'm gonna move this out of the way. We're gonna take this to the heat press that I have already got preheated at 315 degrees. We're gonna press it for 15 seconds. I'm gonna double check my pressure real quick to make sure that I am good for the canvas. It's very thin, so you don't have to have um, super heavy pressure. Got it on the heat press. Because my canvas is painted, I'm gonna take parchment paper 
and lay on top because I don't want the heat to cause any of my paint to lift off onto my heat press. And I'll be honest, I don't know if it will, but I don't want to take that chance. So I've got my parchment paper down and then I'm just going to press it like I normally would for 15 seconds. And so I just get a general idea, put it on there, see how, where I want it to go. I'm going to lay it down here and you can apply your canvas. Um, there's no one right way to do it. I am using my hot glue gun, but you can use a staple, uh, um, a stapler, a big one, not like a regular desktop stapler, to put your canvas on. Um, I just am going to hot glue mine and go from there. There you have it, our reverse canvas. Remember the tighter you pull it, the better um, it's going to look. You can see where I have just a little bit of wrinkling going on here. I'll probably fix that up um, before I hang it, but you get the idea. It's a quick, easy project and it looks great. All right guys, I hope that you found this helpful and enjoyable and again, join us next time and we will see you then. Bye.